Okay, so here's another Mandible video, more about uh, setting up keyframes and rendering out in a high quality version. I'm going to start off by making my second experiment here. 1409.27 second experiment. And what I'm going to do is inside of this folder, I'm going to make a new folder called 1409.27 second experiment images. Okay, so this is where I'm going to put my images. So I can import them all at once. So I'm going to go to my folder where I have my mandible and run the program. I'm going to calculate the 3D here but immediately change it to 1280 by 720 and calculate again. This is going to be a little bit slow but it will end up with a really nice video. I will go ahead and change my lighting up a little bit. Uh, let's do that golden one. Or we could go crazy or even the standard white one here might look pretty cool. I like the gold. Alright, so we're going to do the golden one here. And we're going to start off with the 3D Navigator and the animation. Uh, with one screen it's a little harder to do but you'll have an easier time with dual screens. I'm going to go ahead and see, you see that my default is still at 60. I'm going to change it to PNG and output to my D drive second experiment images folder. Okay, so this is all looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and start getting some keyframes. So I'm going to start off with this initial view, set an animation keyframe, and just let's fly around using my keyboard to zoom in look upwards maybe towards the edge of it set a keyframe go forward sometimes it's fun just to find an edge and keep flying at it I'm going to look up a little bit maybe slide to the left Get a little bit of different move there. Okay, so there's my animation keyframe. If I've got 360 of them over here. If I say loop animation, it's going to come back to the beginning again. I can give it maybe a little bit more time to do that by doubling there at the end. It's still going to be a pretty fast return to my original position. I'm going to go down to uh, downscale all the way so we can see a little re rendered preview. In 45 seconds, we'll have something that shows us what we've got going on here. It's just a flying in, flying in. Oop. So that looping back did not work so good for us in this case. So what I can do is I can go ahead and go to the end again and try coming out of it myself. So I will try rotating, do some rolling, and I'm going to zoom out. Set a keyframe, zoom out some more. Kind of losing sight of it. This happens sometimes. Slide down. Maybe we'll still have something there, I'm not sure. I'll go and look at the thing as we're zooming out. This is not unusual and not really what I had in mind. Let's see what happens. So we keep zooming out. At least we're not flying through anything. Let me see if we can just loop it back to the beginning again. And the nice thing is if I've got my animations up to a certain point, like up to number five, we can just do a preview from six until the end. So yeah, it's a longer one because this is when I'm zooming out, trying to return to a place where I can loop from.
kind of dissolving away there. Now it's going to hit the very end where it's just looping back to the beginning, and again we get a very rapid weirdness there. If we just give it plenty of frames to do that in, it might work out. So I'm going to go ahead and exit that, go to the very end, and say, okay, take as long as you need. Well, maybe not that long. Let's give it five extra seconds to get back to the beginning. Now it's 960 frames at high resolution. This is going to take a while, folks. So let's get that started rendering and then see what we have when we're done.